All right, we are three minutes past uh, the normal uh, starting time. Uh, so let's just get starting, started. Thank you everyone for uh, for joining this uh, morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. Uh, we are going to talk to you about a product that we worked on in the beginning of this year that's called RPM Motospec. And when I say we, this is going to be me, Pierre Chibon, so not as Pingu, and Nils, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Niels Philipsen. Um, I'm called Niels, <laughs> and uh, we're in the same team as Pingu. And uh, what we're talking about, we worked on in the first quarter of this year, before all the circus with the coronavirus started. Um, yeah, I think let's get going. Yeah, so let's we can directly move to the to the first slide then. Nils is going to have the ends on keyboard and uh, well, I'll be doing the first part of it. Uh, so as if the first thing we wanted to go through was the fact that uh, what we are presenting here, uh, you know, the prototype as well as the IDs, uh, it's that, it's, you know, it's, Nils and I were sitting on the, on the stand here to, to speak about this, but this is not actually uh, our, just the two of us, uh, just not, uh, blip. I'll rephrase. This is not just our baby uh, for, from the two of us. Uh, this is also something that Adam Saleh from our team worked on. Uh, and it also, it's also the result of a lot of discussion we've had on the Dever list. A lot of people have given their inputs and thought about this, including Neil Gompa, Klein, and uh, many other people who, who haven't listed here. Um, so the first thing was, uh, well, thank you for everyone on, the, on contributing to this. Uh, what we're presenting here is a solution it may it's probably not the solution it's a step forward uh hopefully not a step awkward uh there is already a second proposal that uh, that addresses some of the some of the same angles that was uh, pushed forward by uh, uh nicola mayo as an f34 change if i remember correctly uh so you'll see there a second uh, a second way of doing uh, something you know you'll see here another way of doing what nicola is presenting or you can see Nicolas' proposal, uh, another way of doing what we are presenting here. Um, so let's start with, with the problem. Um, so the problem is we currently have in spec file, we have two fields, the release field and the changelog fields, which are manually maintained. And this leads to a, a number of problems. Um, one of them being that every time you have a pull request that touches one of these fields, uh, the pull requests are going to conflict with uh, with one another. Uh, that also includes, you know, outside of pull requests, just doing merges from uh, from a branch to another. If you don't do a fast forward merge, uh, then you'll often have a conflict in these fields. Um, that leads also to a situation where every automation that you want to build on spec file and automating spec file cleaning them up uh, will will be more fragile because of this field. They will need to be able to handle uh, reconciliations or change log and, and, and uh, release. Um, and let's be honest, we currently have three change logs in Fedora. Uh, we have one that is at the, the describe the change of the spec file itself, and that is in the spec file. We have one that describes the history of the Git repositories that store the spec file, and that's the commit log, the Git commit log. And we have one in body, which is meant to be user consumable. Uh, that's something which shows in the in the GUI uh, for updating a system, and that is the, the body uh, update notes. Now, the truth is that for lots of packages, uh, the RPM change log and the Git commit log are just about the same for 90% of the commits. Uh, the one potential difference that you won't have in spec file is the usual, oops, I forgot to change the sources file commit that you will see in the git log but not in the rpm change log and but for you know the vast majority of problem of uh, packages out there outside of this i forgot to, to update the sources file you know the these two change logs are going to be about the same so the idea that we're trying to 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 go to and it'll start your clue for the next one there we go. Uh, the idea is that we remove these two fields, or we we don't remove them, but we we no longer touch them manually. So we want to automatically bump the release uh, when we do a build, and with this we actually uh, want to keep in mind to to the upgrade path. So we want to be to be sure that uh, if you do a rebuild, uh, if you rebuild the package for f n minus one, 
uh, you can still upgrade to S FN uh, easily, uh, as well as generate the RPM change log. And then our uh, since we believe that the, that it's going to be most often uh, there will be most often similar between the git change log and the RPM change log. The idea is to generate the RPM change log from the git commit uh, messages. But then we run into the questions of yes, but not every commit message should be included. Uh, you know the. I forgot to update the sources file is probably one thing that you don't want to have in the RPM change log, so in the spec file. Uh, and we also want to be able to edit and correct. Uh, oops, I made a typo. I, I referenced the wrong Bugzilla bug ID, uh, you know, kind of thing. So we want to be able to exclude some commits from the change log as well as uh, um, uh, I'd say edit uh, past, uh, past change log entries. And and we want to do this in a way that does not impact everyone. Uh, we want this to be opt-in. Uh, so you don't, if you don't do anything, it works as it does today. If you are interested to test, then you can opt-in and see how that works. Um, so the, there is a question already in the chat about the upgrade pass. Is it really uh, important anymore? It's, it is a good question. Uh, one of the things is that the DNF system upgrade now does a distro sync rather than a, an update. Uh, so it will downgrade everything that is uh, lower in the new version. Uh, so it, it is technically less important than it, than it was, but it, it, seemed to be, it seemed for us to be a good practice nonetheless. Uh, so there are, two, there are two aspects. It is a good practice nonetheless to try to, to keep uh, FN plus one at a higher version release than FN. Uh, and the second thing, it's, it is something which we currently still try to do. I don't think the Packaging guidelines have been amended to say you don't have to care about the upgrade pass anymore. Um, so we still want to to try to adhere to the, to these uh, to these constraints. So with these problems and this idea in mind, we're starting to look on uh, how we can do the RPM change log. Ta-da! Uh, so we looked for a few ideas. Uh, one of them that was actually given nice. I believe Jeremy Klein is the first one that mentioned it in the on the on the devil list. Um, it was about using Git tags. So the idea is uh, when you when the when you believe a commit is ready to be built, you add a tag to it, and in the in the metadata of the tag, you can append a, a, a message, and that message can include could include then your change log, could include the things like also the the release field. Uh, some people uh, suggest it could be stored in there. Um, but that doesn't actually solve the that doesn't actually solve the change log problem, the three change log problem, because well, you still have uh, you will still have the change log in body, so we can ignore that one. You still have the commit logs, and now instead of storing the change log in the spec file, you store it in the git tag. So okay, it can be auto generated, uh, but then you still have to go and check it and cleaning up uh, that the way it is. It's not actually removing; I think it's potentially helping to create it. But you know, at that point, uh, fed package build file package commit uh, as an as an option that just puts what's in the change log whatever you in, you enter as a git commit message so technically that option is uh, is basically already there plus it's it's going to be hard um, how do we, how do we want to retrieve that information should we should we include you know uh, a tumble like syntax in the the git tag to extract okay this is going to be the release field this is going to be uh, the the change log um, then there is the old question on how do you edit such a change log? Do we allow uh, magic keywords that say, well, um, this, this tag is actually replacing that tag over here uh, because I made a typo and this is uh, what you should be now using. Uh, do we want to use git push minus force, uh, dash dash force for git tags? Do we want to allow people to remove and add git tags as they, as they feel? Uh, that seems very... Um, Potentially problematic because then you may under you may end up having two packages with the same change log that actually come from two different uh, commit and they don't really you lose the history of what happened or why this build was including that change log uh, because in the meantime the tag that was included that change log got moved to some to, to somewhere else um, so that was a solution that we didn't really like um, so we looked at another one. Uh, so that was also an idea that was uh, uh, shared on the devil list, and that's, some, that's uh, something which seemed interesting. You, the idea was uh, you generate the change log from the commit log up to the point where 
the uh, commit that is an external fi a file that is external to the spec file, at which point you just include that file. So you have a changelog file in uh, in this git and just you know plain uh, the changelog just as it is today in the spec file. You just copy paste that into a, an external file in this git, and from that commit and all the commits above, the more recent ones, uh, this will be auto generated from the commit message, and as soon as you as soon as you know it. It will basically start from the most recent commit and move, move down. Uh, but as soon as it it's, uh, faces a commit that touches that file, the, the, the algorithm is going to start, which means you can edit that changelog file and add all the new commits and reward and type of fix everything. And then you know the, it will just include that file and stop uh, trying to, re to regenerate uh, anything from there. And that's the idea that we liked most. So that's the, the one we went for. Uh, then we started looking also to uh, the release fields. So one of the idea, and that's, I think Neil brought this from the, the OBS angle, uh, angle experience. So the open build service that OpenSUSE runs, uh, that, that already has the, the feature of um, bumping the release at every build, um, was to use the number of commits and number of builds in the release field. That was very tempting because it's very easy to, you change the version and then you count the number of uh, commit that was done since the version was changed. And then you can ask the build system how many builds have there been with that version and that number of commits, and then you can just increment. That's that's very easy to do. Uh, it had two, two things that we didn't know exactly how to handle then that were um, not happening in some ways. One of them was uh, the merge commits. So when you when you have a single branch linear history, that's very straightforward. But when you start to consider merge commits, uh, you know that goes uh, that branches and get merged. Well, that's becoming a, a lot a lot different to handle. How, how, how do you count the commits? Which commits do you count? Which commit do you not count? How do you handle that? And then there was the there is the whole question of the upgrade pass uh, because that reflects to the to the merge commits. So if you have a you do a, a push to a commit on the right branch, uh, and so you get number of commits one, and then you merge that you map that branch into Fedora 32 branch, but then there is a merge commit, which means suddenly the one commit that you have added on the right becomes two commits on the Fedora 32 branch, which means suddenly the upgrade pass is broken. Um, so that is something that we still wanted to to maintain, uh, as I explained earlier, and. There are a few ways we could do we could do to address this. We could start with the dist tag at the front, so then it becomes uh, version dist number of commits, number of builds. It could be uh, one of the one we were looking at most was, was to to try to do version number of commits dist number of builds, um, so, so to try to mimic more of the the current behavior of things. Um, so there was there was a few things, and we didn't know if we wanted to go in the path of changing the place of the dis tag uh, in the entire distribution and how the how tools like DNF, uh, you know, package kit. Although I don't think this one is maintained so much anymore, or just Yum uh, would be able to cover them. So we this is still something which may be doable. This is something which we didn't. Uh, well, we started looking at other things as a, as an alternative. Uh, the second alternative we looked at was the R package utils approach. That is a utility that Climb wrote, um, which essentially adds a templating engine on the top of the spec file macros. Um, this is this would work, and Climb actually has it working. It it does the work, it does the job. Uh, it's just we we did not like the the idea of having a template on the top of macros. That seems like uh, a fairly fragile approach. It's it's adding template on you know. Uh, it's adding layers of complexity and layers of uh, potentially something that you know could be that could end up being fragile or hard, hard to debug. Um, so that's also something we it could work. It does work. Uh, climb as it's working, but it is not the, the most uh, the most appealing uh, ID. So we we looked for another one again. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so the, the third idea we looked at was basically to try to use the the build history and the build target to mimic to the the human maintainer. So to reproduce what humans currently do, uh, 
uh, just using uh, the build the build history and the build targets. Um, the, I'm going to touch upon quickly uh, the build history. So there are two ways we can do that. Uh, one way would be uh, we just create Koji and tell us uh, have, it, have it tell us how to behave. Um, but that means that you need network access every time. Uh, it's going to be hard, you know, if you have a slow internet connection and you need to create the entire build, build history of, C, of something like the kernel, uh, that will be uh, that will take some time. Uh, so that's the place where we decided to use the Git tags as a as a mechanism to record which commits was was built, uh, and then using that information of Git tags with the build history. Uh, together with the build targets, which you can provide, which either Koji provides, or you can provide as a as a packager when you want to build locally. Uh, well, then we have sufficient sufficient information to be to to be able to make our uh, logic works, and so that's that's the idea uh, we went for. Um, Nils, if you wanna, yeah. Uh, so that's the idea we went for. We 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 are trying to emulate uh, the human the current packagers experience as good as possible. Uh, we do realize that there will be cases and spec files which will not be able to be supported by RPM spec uh, auto spec at this time. Uh, we do hope that this is a step you know a step forward in the right direction. Uh, we do realize that it's probably not going to be the final answer that uh, shall be graved into stone and never to be moved again. Um, so the way we do that is you have very, very little changes in the way we work and now you opt in. Uh, opt out is also fairly easy. We rep we produce reproducible RPMs. So the spec file in itself, if you build the spec file locally and in Koji, you may end up uh, potentially with some differences. But once the, when the SRPM is built in Koji, you can rebuild SR this, this SRPM in, every, in any system that is RPM based and you'll get the exact same output all the time. So the, the spec file is no longer the, the unit of reproducibility, uh, but the SRPM becomes is it. We, pre, we try to prevent the, the upgrade pass as much as possible. Um, that's, that was one of our goal and that's what we are trying to achieve with the emulating the humans. Uh, and we, we do support local builds uh, from the spec file. It just have, uh, there are a few tricks uh, to do, but basically uh, it is there. So to give you an idea on how easy or hard it is to, to opt in into this, uh, well, this is a, a very simple uh, spec file. You have the name, the version, and then the release becomes that macro and the change log becomes another macro. And that's all you have to do. Uh, you potentially, if you had an existing change log, you will want to you know save this into a separate file, uh, which I believe is simply named change log. And the, the existing release, and you know, you can ex you can basically ignore. So, how does it work? A little bit more in uh, in practice. Uh, RPM Motospec itself is uh, it's a CLI tool. Uh, it's a Python mod it's a Python module library that, that comes with a CLI tool, as well as two Koji plugins. One that runs on the builders, and one that runs on the hub. Um, so to give you, a, we have a, a small graphical representation of the workflow. Uh, when you do the Fed package build, uh, Koji will start by building the SRPM. Uh, the, building the SRPM means we're basically doing a Git clone. Uh, then we have, this is the, the Git checkout. Once the checkout is done, it's going to, Koji is going to call all the Koji plugins which are post SCM checkout. That includes the, the RPM auto spec one. Uh, so RPM auto spec will do its magic there. And, and then we just, Koji will just build the SRPM as it does normally, which is the equivalent of RPM build uh, dash BS, I believe. Uh, RPM auto spec is going to pull from the digit repositories the, the existing tags, as we mentioned. Once the SRPM is built, Koji will build the RPM as it normally does. Once the RPM is built, Koji will tag the build as it normally does. And once the tag is done, Koji will call all the plugins that are post tag, that includes the second RPM auto spec plugin. And that's that plugin will call this git and say, tag, add a, add a git tag to this specific commit, which has which I have just built successfully. And that is the way that the, the Koji actually manages itself to, to record into the git repositories, the, the build history that RPM auto spec then reuses uh, in the build SCM spec. 
And now I'm going to leave the floor to Niels, who will uh, run you through uh, a little bit more information on how that works. So I hope you all see the next slide. OK, um, the quant line tool is uh, basically the thing all, doing all the dirty work. It reads Git tags, which get there by uh, some mechanism we'll talk about in a moment. Um, the commit log messages and uh, this to the site change log file where we put the history in or where we can edit things after, after, the, after the fact. Um, it comes up with the next release value uh, for a potential next build and uh, generates the missing change log entries that aren't in the change log field yet. And um, it has code to fill in these values in the spec file. Like um, when later um, this one, uh, the code, when it creates the SRPM, there's where we hook in. Um, we ensure that the, uh, the latest builds are tagged in this Git. So um, everything is uh, prepared for, for the command line tool to run. And then we use that command line in the build route to uh, insert the things in the spec file and then build the SRPM from there. And this one uh, is then used to, to build the final packages. Okay. Um, then uh, Pingu talked about that uh, before, after a build was successful, it just tag tags it in the diskit repository. We uh, implemented uh, a, a, a small API endpoint on uh, on the Pega side for for that, so that Koji doesn't have to have its own Pega user um, to do that. Okay, so we have a couple of known side effects and shortcomings. So that's uh, always a, a good topic to, <laughs> to talk about. So um, uh, the, we, um, like the, 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 the order commits came, came in or the order builds were done is uh, how the changelog is sorted, not the commit dates. I mean, um, Anybody who's worked with Git for a time knows you can shuffle these around by by rebasing or cherry picking or stuff like that. So the uh, the order of dates doesn't uh, well does doesn't hold too uh, much importance there because I could cherry pick a very old commit from from some other branch, and we don't want to resort that. And we can also. Uh, at, at least with with a prototype, while it was still working in staging, we kind of have a couple of problems with staging right now. That's related to the color move. But um, when staging is uh, back back in order again, you'll be able to play around with that. Um, so uh, right now, you can just uh, tell Koji to build from some random commit, and uh, this will of course influence, um, like. Um, let me backtrack that. That, that sen uh, sentence doesn't make too much of a sense. Um, um, we can just, we, we have the tip of a branch, like let's say Fedora 32 uh, right now, the current uh, latest stable branch, and we can do any number of, of builds from the same commit with that scheme. But we could also um, build an older commit from that, from that branch, and that would um, then uh, uh, like um, the, the the change log history would would look look a, look a bit weird there. I mean, um, let me just. There's some more to to that. I'll post that in the chat. Um, the nitty gritty details about that are here for, about both of these points. Um, okay. So right now, the, the prototype has some shortcomings uh, in uh, that it's a normal Python package. That is, it's in the version py, uh, Python path. It's a normal site, uh, site lib uh, package. And um, if you upgrade the Python, Python ver version on the builders, suddenly it wouldn't find the, uh, the package anymore, and uh, the command line tool wouldn't be functioning and stuff like that. So uh, the solution or workaround to that is uh, that we 
do it like in the olden days and uh, make it uh, like have a, have a copy of it and use a share RPM order spec, something that's not tied to the Python version. And uh, then uh, this uh, this should work regardless of the of the exact Python version. Like if you go at it with a new Python interpreter, it won't care that it's a new Python interpreter as long as it's compatible, but um, Python has been good to us in that regard so far. Uh, we haven't gotten around to pre-release, to implementing pre-releases yet. We put quite some thought into it and uh, we made some preparations in how the macros work. Like if you if you think back to the, to the uh, example spec file, uh, the auto rel macro understands a couple of flags and options for these cases, but there um, there's no code behind that yet. So we would have to implement these use cases before uh, we can use it for these use cases. And um, in order that the spec files are uh, are buildable locally, um, we have to have the the macro files available on on uh, the the uh, pa packages machine right now it's uh you would have to install it manually um we could just um, in, in, install the dependency from the red hat rpm config package to our one or integrate it with that one that doesn't make too much of a dif difference and uh all the other tools are currently totally unaware of, of the magic we're doing here. So uh, we uh, we need to in integrate with them a little better. Right now, you would have to tell Fat Package to skip NVR check because it doesn't really know the right NVR because um, it would have to have the uh, it, it would have to know to talk to our tool uh, for that. Okay, and uh, scratch builds from local SRPMs don't work yet. Like uh, if you commit to your repository, if you push it uh, to disk it and then uh, tell Fat Package uh, to build a scratch build from, from, an, from a known commit hash that works, but uh, from an arbitrary uh, locally produced SRPM that doesn't work yet. Um, and uh, we would have to extend, uh, enhance Fat Package to um, create the um, to pre-process the the spec file accordingly before producing the SPRPM from which to produce a scratch build. And with that, I'll hand it back to Pingu. So the the our current next next steps are basically um, we. We used to have the staging environment. So before the Columbus started, we had deployed this on staging and we were able to test it there. That's also how we got the feedback about, for example, the, the, the tie to the regular Python packages, uh, which makes RPM spec currently not working with the Python stack. Um, so that was a good, <laughs> very good feedback. Uh, so we want uh, we want to deploy this again back to staging once the, the staging environment is back online, so that we can call for testers on, on this again. Uh, after this, we we do want to, you know, we have had a few people telling us that this is worth bringing to Fesco. So one of the point of this uh, of this presentation was to give some more uh, explanation on uh, what. RPM to spec does uh, how it works, but also asking you if you believe that this is worth uh, pushing forward. If so, then uh, then we will bring this to to Fresco for consideration. Ask them if they believe that if they agree that this is worth uh, pushing forward. And then we need to to fix the information uh, you know shortcomings, including things like uh, yeah the RPM uh, the RPM dev pump spec uh, change that we need to do uh, that was discussed in the chat here including making Fed package aware of uh, auto release uh, macro including uh, you know uh, fixing the 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 pre what's the, the not pre commits but uh, help me here names uh, finish the macro the pre release and post release uh, uh, yeah case use case because <laughs> where, where the other use case um, we haven't Thank you. <laughs> addressed addressed yet. So, okay. 
uh, fixing fixing this, and then of course the, the usual uh, bug fixes and improvements. Um, but that's that's basically uh, that's basically what's on our roadmap. The first step being uh, today, uh, do you folks think uh, this is good to to push forward? And uh, and then the next question, the next slide is basically if you have any questions. And I see Jan as one in the scratch build section. Uh, so there is Fed package has two ways to do scratch builds. You can either do Fed package build dash dash scratch, which is going to do a Fed, which is going to call Koji and ask Koji to build from a Git URL and mark and make this build a scratch build. Or you can do Fed package scratch build dash dash SRPM, which we, which is going to generate as an SRPM locally first upload that one to Koji and have Koji do a scratch build from there. Um, the issue is that the, the Koji pre-process the spec files, uh, you know, at the SRPM level. Uh, so if you do a fed package scratch build, that's dash SRPM, without pre-processing the spec file locally, manually yourself first, uh, then you won't have the, the, mac the spec file will not contain the macros that are needed for up for the RPM to build correctly. Uh, so the, the way you can do it currently is that you will have to call the RPM to build uh, manually on the, this Git repository before you do the, before you do the fed package cross build command or and the long and the proper fix is going to have to, to teach fed package to call RPM to spec on the, the Git repo, on the, this Git repo before uh, for spec file that, you know, uses these macros uh, call the RPM to spec before doing the before when generating the SRPM before uploading it to Koji. Does that make more sense? Okay, thank you. Uh, another question: What about two levels of macro? Use auto change log or change log plus auto change log plus previous change log entries. Um, Okay, so the, the question, Carl is basically wanting us to get rid of the changelog macro uh, entirely from the spec file and just have the auto changelog instead of it and have the Neil Savan answer to that one. Um, contrary to looks, changelog isn't a macro. So, um, yeah, the, 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 I'm not sure if, if, if it's workable, like have auto changelog to expand to change log and then RPM build understands that um, I wouldn't bet anything on it. So we'd have to try it out. I'm not sure. Um, I guess it's it's mostly a matter of taste um, if it works. Um, if it doesn't, uh, it's it's out of the question because then then we lose the feature of, of a locally rebuildable package. Um, ah, Neil, Neil says that uh, RPM doesn't expand any macros. Uh, like, if if a macro expanded to change, like it would it wouldn't work. Do I get you right? Is Packet aware of this change? Yes, the Packet team is aware of the RPM auto spec work. Uh, we've been we've had a few discussions with Tomasz Tomaszek. Uh, they are they were actually looking at RPM auto spec in the in in the early days uh, then they saw the discussion on the devil list and they were like okay this is there is still a uh, working going but that's basically uh, they are aware of that and i actually think uh, a little bit like neil here that rpm to spec would probably simplify their life do we have any other question I mean, if if not, if not right right now, you can always get hold of us um, on IRC um, wherever we we frequent on the on the devil list, I guess. So the project is still on pagoda.io slash fedora dash infra slash rpm spec. I've put the link on the chat if you're looking for it. And we do have one question for Jans about a comparison to uh, Nicola Mayo's uh, proposal. Do you want to take this one, Niels, or? Uh, I, I think ours is a, 
at, at least for existing maintainers, it's it's much simpler because it's really 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 tiny change in in uh, in your workflow. Um, your spec file before and after will look almost identical, except the difference that the change log is missing from uh, from the from the spec file. Um, I, th I think uh, Nic Nicolas' approach would would um, you would have to to adjust more to, uh, yourself your workflow more to uh, more to that one. It's um, to, uh, to 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 be frank, I only uh, um, got aware of uh, of this approach this week, so I'll I'll stop here because because I haven't had too much time to look at, look at it myself. There was a question from uh, what happens when Fedora messaging screws up and Koji fails to tag a commit with the build info. And the answer is simply Koji doesn't rely on Fedora messaging. It directly calls Spiker's API. And if that was not available for some reason, uh, I don't know whether the build would fail or not. I expect. I, I, I hope not. It uh, should. It shouldn't fail at that point. We should just. Um, we we ha we have to revisit um, that one. I mean, uh, mind that we worked on that a couple months ago, so it's not all super present in 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 our heads. Um, but the way we should do it is uh, retry it a couple times. If it doesn't work out, then then fail. Um, if you if you remember back, the uh, the builder plugin will ensure that the Git tags are present. If that if that fails at, at that point, then so the the, the, build the subsequent build will fail, of course. But then there's something more serious. So the, the what what Neil says here is that basically one of the first thing the builder plugin does is it asks for Koji for the build history of the package. And then it checks that history against what's present in the Git tags. So it's it makes sure that Git is up to date versus the, the Koji database, basically. And and that's a, that's a second place where we actually are able to uh, tag things in uh, in Pagure or in this Git uh, from the Koji uh, build history. Uh, we have a question from Ifa. Is there likely to be a follow-on project additional work from this work that you have already completed? And the answer is yes. Um, one of the ideas is that if FESCO, uh, if FESCO thinks that this is valuable and we want to move forward for that, uh, then we will have to schedule a... It's, I don't think this will be a three months initiative, uh, but it's maybe a, a one to two months thing where uh, at least three people push this behind. And I also future. remember um, from earlier on during the talk, um, a question about the actual macro names involved. I think uh, right now, this is a prototype, so nothing uh, with regard to naming is set in stone yet. So if there are uh, good reasons to name it some something else, just maybe to also differentiate it from, from competing approaches, um, we, we can do that still. It's not in production anywhere right now. So there's the question, could we consider making it so spec files that don't have a change log change that do not have a change log section entirely uh, would automatically we can do that? change log. Yeah. Um, I would the answer to the answer to that is everything is possible with time and money. I, th I think it would even <laughs> if it would even be fairly simple. And that probably would be a uh, we would instead of in, instead of changing checking if the auto change log is present. Uh, we would just check yeah. the change. Yeah, the some slight change to the conditions involved, yeah. whether whether to to get active, but yeah, that's uh, that may be a good idea. Do you want? Can you open a ticket for this? Thank you. We are a few minutes ahead of, of schedule, so I'm, uh, 
I'm more than happy to uh, to let you guys go to uh, have the more social times, uh, guys and girls, I should say, uh, to have a little bit more social times uh, out there, or we can hang around and give answer a question if there are any. Right, I guess uh, we've uh, we've exhausted the list of questions here. Uh, so thank you everyone for attending. Thank you for uh, for your questions. Uh, I've only seen support in the chat, so I guess people are happy about this. So let's uh, let's bring it to F to Fesco and uh, and talk to Ifa to schedule some time uh, to finish this. <laughs>